Okay, this is the head for the seven foot one. And I brought it up here so that I could really concentrate on getting everything detailed because it's so high down there. I wanted to be able to get right at it where I could see it because it's critical to capture this look, this intense look that we're getting here. I've got this eye. This, everything is done on this piece, but I'm working on this eye now to bring in the two of them in to have that intensity with a certain uh, wariness that he's watching and looking and nothing is going to escape his view. This eye is done for the most part. I still have to do the pupils. I, I'll finish the pupils with it on the rest of the body when I finish the body so that I can precisely, shall we say, aim where he's looking for the maximum effect. So this is what I do. I just bring it up here, cut the head off, and I did all the clay on this, and I'm down to just finishing this eye and a little tweaking here and there on the face. So it's just kind of like this, and I just work in the clay. I keep it warm in my hand so that I can add it where I need to. Like we need some more up here. And then I'll tool that in. And this way I can, unlike working on at seven feet up on the ladder, uh, I can rotate this around and make sure I've got the right perspective that it, the face will read from every angle. This is, this is one of the especially fun parts when I can just work in my home studio like I did with the, uh, with the maquette and just really concentrate, daytime, nighttime, whatever. I can play with the light coming in to get a sense of, depending how the sunlight is on, lo on its final location, how is that going to affect what the expression is? what their shadow is going to do, uh, like on the ruffles of his shirt and so on and so forth, on his hair. If I was working on it all in situ in, in the, the position of the, the big one, I can't rotate it around very easily. And the light is down there, uh, directional, so there's only one sense of what the light is. Here I get to have natural light and see what's going to do. It'll be especially fun on these pupils, which I have to design just how I'm going to do these pupils, if they're going to be open like that, which is probably what I'll do for the distance they'll be viewed at and the intensity, but I just have to work that out. And then once I do that, I'll put in the highlights, which these are always fun and always a challenge too. This is too big right now, but I put the highlights in. You can kind of get a sense of what that does to the eye now. Way too big, but this is just an example. So see now, if you're able to capture that, that just now gave him life, even though this isn't refined. That's the highlight from the sunlight that catches in someone's eyes, and that brings them to life completely. And that too has to be very strategically placed as to just where it will give the right look, but also where it will catch the sunlight. As you can see here, There'll be a highlight in here. It will be, it has to be in the same location in both eyes. So this highlight will be determined by the other eye. And if you can see that, how that brought both eyes to light. Now they're not exactly 
matching in parallel and so on and so forth, that'll all be done. But what we're looking at here is this hat is tipped down, so there's not going to be any sun reflecting off his pupil from this side at all. This is tipped up, so the sun, wherever it's at, is going to be picking up down here. So that means this highlight has to be on the left upper side of the pupil so that the sun will come down like that. It will be angled such that when the sun is over here, it will pick up this highlight. In theory then, this highlight, of course, will have to be the same way, but you can see everything is tipped down here, even his brow is tipped down, so it's, there's not going to be any sun highlighting over here, but we got this arc here, so that when the sun's coming this way, it will highlight that eye just, just enough. So if you can tell from where it started, the first view of it, now I just roughed in those highlights, it makes all the difference in the, in the world, giving, giving him light. I've got his, his mouth set in a firm determination with the lips kind of pinched together. And even when you tighten your jaw in determination, this muscle gets very pronounced and strong. So he's got a very strong jaw set, determined jaw set. And in fact, even his nostrils are flared sides actually flare out a little bit when you're taking a deep breath. So that's just some of the minor technicalities that go into sculpting a head.